Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT TV and welcome back to the final introduction episode of the brand new reference premiere line. These are the RP8000F Gen 2s. If you haven't seen it already, in the previous weeks we first unboxed the RP500Ms. Following that we unboxed the 600M2s and the 502Ss together. Then following that, we unbox the center channels, the 500C2s and the 504C2, alongside the 500SA. So we have been busy these last couple of weeks getting all these out of the boxes and going over the differences between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 lines. This is gonna be the final unboxing episode before we start our listenings and our reviews of these speakers, as well as possibly some compares, side-by-side -side compares of the Gen 1 and Gen 2 lines. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you've liked and subscribed below to be the first to know when all of those come out. But let's go ahead and get these unboxed. I'm excited for these units. So these are the 8000 Fs Gen 2s. So let's unbox this guy. Then we're gonna flip over. Now they are double boxed and hopefully when you guys get these, you have higher ceilings than I do because unboxing these in the short ceilings, as you can see, it's kind of a pain. But anyways, on to the real thing here. Now, as you can see, I unboxed from the top because as per usual, Eclipse packs these upside down. So they were upside, they were actually right side up inside of the second box. Then you flip it to the box being right side up and then the bottom of the speakers on the top of the box. So it's a little confusing, but if you unbox in that order, then you should be okay. So when you actually get to the final box, you'll wanna unbox as such with the top of the speaker on top and the internal speaker is actually gonna be the feet of the speaker on the bottom. So as you flip it over, you're flipping it onto its feet. As with the rest of the line, we do have our manuals, we have our warranty card, and we have our pocket guide inside on top. I'm gonna set these off to the side here. Next, we have a single layer of foam that spans the entire cabinet, followed by two separate pieces of foam. Separate piece of foam to guard the sides, separate piece of side to guard the side on the front. And if you look closely, I'll go ahead and bring this up a little closer to the camera, you can see it is actually fitted to the speaker feet itself. So this is actually fitted to wrap perfectly around the speaker feet. Same on this guy, wraps around the rear end of it, and this is for the input cup here. I'm gonna set these off to the side. In addition to the foam, we do have these cardboard corners that span almost the entirety of the cabinet. Those are on all four sides there. And I'll show you this on this one. This is actually designed to sit on the top of the cabinet. It's two separate pieces of foam that are taped together to make sure that it stays in place to form fit around the edges of the top there. And then of course we have our double middle bracing here. And then we have our grill, which I'm gonna set off to the side for now. Alright, here we have the brand new RP8000F Gen 2s. There they are guys, the RP8000F Gen 2s. Now, the last time we covered some of the differences was in the 500M line. So I just wanna reiterate some of those differences here. The first of which is going to be aesthetics. So I'm gonna pull the grills out of the boxes real quick and share with you some of that info. And here is our brand new redesigned grill for the RP8000F Gen 2. As with the rest of the line, it does go straight from top to bottom, a little thinner up here. 
and then widens out and flattens as it gets towards the bottom to emphasize the logo and to give it a better, more broad, athletic kind of stance according to Tony Martin, the industrial designer of these guys. In addition to that, when you take the grill off, the first thing you're gonna notice in comparison to the first gen is gonna be this gigantic horn. It wraps all the way to the edges of the bezel here and maximizes the space on the face of the RP8000Fs and on the rest of the line for that instance. It does this throughout the entire span of the line. What this is gonna do is not only does it give you a more aesthetically pleasing look and change the aesthetics overall, but what it's also going to do is improve your sound stage and your imaging of the speakers as well. Now, one other thing that it's gonna do is it's going to increase the efficiency of your high frequency driver. So what that means internally is it's actually giving Clips the ability to do away with their ferrofluid. Essentially, ferrofluid is a coolant and it helps keep the driver cool when it's moving at such rapid speeds. With a new gigantic horn, it increased the efficiency of the high frequency driver and that ferrofluid is no longer needed. So in this new gen line, they've actually done away with that ferrofluid as well. Next, moving down to the woofers, they've added a shorting ring to reduce distortion. Now, personally, what I think is the most significant improvement, and this could be just my opinion, you guys can tell me what you think in the comments, what I think is the most substantial improvement to the Reference Premier Gen 2 line is the changing of the cabinets themselves. So in the 8000s especially, what they've actually done, if I turn it around to the back here, there's a couple different things you're no you'll notice. So when you turn around back, you'll also notice that the new generation is dual ported. And that's not just to say that they've added a port, what they've actually done is they've taken a note from the RF7s and they've actually divided the cabinet into two separate smaller cabinets. So what that does is it allows them to control the internal standing waves a little bit easier because they are higher in frequency. Another thing that you'll notice when you look at the rear of the unit is you'll notice the binding post. So what's happening with those binding posts, we have the dual binding posts for biamping, and then there is a separate set of binding posts here at the bottom. So what that additional set of binding posts is, is it's a connection for your Atmos speakers. So if you look up top here, you actually notice this cap. You pull off this cap and you can notice a connection up top as well. This cleans up your wiring a little bit because you run your wiring to the bottom, you connect your Atmos speakers from your amp to the bottom set of terminals, and when you get your Atmos speakers, you actually have an included set of plugs here, banana plugs here, that you can come here, plug in there, and directly plug in to the back of your speaker. So you're cleaning up your Atmos connections as well by plugging into the bottom, sending the wires all the way through to the top, and then plugging in your Atmos connection directly to the back of the speaker. So it overall improves your appearance as well as cleans up your wiring a little bit as well. I'll put this guy away. And that about covers it from front to back. These are our brand new RP8000F lines. And as promised, I'm not done yet. I wanna take one of these guys apart because I can't not take it apart. We have to see this internal cabinet structure because I'm kind of dying to see it. I hope you guys are too. So I'm going to flip these guys around, grab some tools, and we'll take one of these guys apart. All right, so as per usual, we're going to start with our high frequency driver. And just like the previous generation, you can kind of get a finger under there and peel and the rubber portion of the horn comes right off. So this is the rubber portion of the horn. And once that's off, we reveal our screws here. And here we have the driver and horn combo of the RP8000F Gen 2. Set this off to the side here. Let's go ahead and drop down a little further and we can take a look at the low frequency driver. 
someone in a previous episode had suggested that we use a pick, a guitar pick, in order to get behind it. Now, as you can see, you can get it in there and it's kind of a little bit, it's not quite strong enough to actually pry it out. But what you can do is use it in combination with one of your other methods, like say your flathead screwdriver that's a little bit more rigid, and give yourself that little additional space in between that you may need to get the flathead screwdriver behind it. So using the cloth and the pick, we are able to remove this without damaging the external of the speaker or the face of the speaker. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna pry slowly around the edges. Again, you don't wanna just grab it and pull all at once or you stand the chance of potentially breaking this beauty ring and we'll have to replace that as well. We're gonna to toss that off to the side there. And last, let's go ahead and get off our driver. As you can see, our woofer is already starting to shift. So we wanna keep a thumb on the bottom until we get the screw completely out. And then we can kind of let it fall just a bit and pick up from the bottom and pull out to remove. And sometimes you need to grab a screwdriver to be able to push this pin in So that is your first driver out of the compartment. Now let's go ahead and get the other driver out as well since we're taking a look at the entire cabinet as a whole. So we've got our pick here, we've got our flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna pry out a little portion of it, then lift up and go forward. Again, starting with top. Saving one of the two bottoms for last. So that you can hold in one and so it doesn't start falling out on you here. And here you have our driver number two, our eight inch driver number two for the RP8000F Gen 2. Set this one off to the side too. And the moment that I have been waiting for, I don't know about you guys, the moment I have been waiting for is to check out the internals of this cabinet. Now let's take a look inside of the rest. All right, so this is the inside of the RP8000F cabinet. On the top, we have our center brace that goes all the way from the top of the cabinet, all the way through the middle section, all the way to the bottom of the cabinet, you'll notice it right back here as well that goes all the way from top to bottom the high frequency driver and the top low frequency driver is actually one cabinet as you can see i can kind of get my fingers down from the high frequency driver to show you that this top section is one cabinet and this bottom section has its own cabinet so if i pick up here you can see the lower frequency the low frequency port there so that is it Now one other item I did want to address real quick, we did have a ton of requests in the RP500M unboxing and disassembly video to show the internal crossover network. So as promised in some of the comments that I left, we are going to pull out the input cup and see if we can get a look at the crossover network. It does not look like we're going to be able to get a good view of it from this standpoint. So let's go ahead and pull out this bottom port as well and see if that gives us a better view. All right, and for those of you interested in seeing the port itself, 
here is the Tractrix port utilized in the RP8000F Gen 2. And there are, as we mentioned before, there are two of those. So these are the 8000F Gen 2 ports. And now let's take a look at this crossover. Grab a couple stills here as well. And there's your crossover. It is a huge game changer, a huge step up in the Reference Premier line to divide out those cabinets, to reduce those standing waves, and all over just redesign the structure of these cabinets. Now, what I'm excited about next is to put these back together, put them head to head against the previous generation and see how they stack up. I'm also going to assemble this whole room and have a reference premiere listening and review the speaker setup as a whole. So if you haven't already, please click that like and subscribe button below and also click the little bell next to it to enable notifications so you can be the first to know as these new videos release. If you're ready to buy a set of the Reference Premier Line Gen 2 speakers, hit up Corey or Steven on the Clip Owners Facebook page, or go ahead and click the link below to the Paducah Home Theater website, and you can buy directly from the website. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below, and we'll be happy to assist. Otherwise, we'll see you again next week for another episode of PHT TV.